Greetings fellow ARK players. In this video we're going to go over my top 15 favorite mods in ARK. Before we start though, I do want to say that I've played my fair share of Vanilla ARK. And as we all know, Vanilla ARK is as unforgiving as it is time consuming. The mods in this list are for streamlining the game, so you're not going to find decoration or skin mods in this list. Just mods that make the game more fun to play without it feeling like cheating. One more thing to mention is that this list is set in an intentional order, so I value the mod that comes in at number 1 more than I value the mod that comes in at number 15, for example. Now that we've got all that out of the way, let's dive in. Headshot. Starting off at number 15 is the Meat Spoiler mod, which allows you to quickly turn raw meat into spoiled meat. This mod will end up saving you a lot of time when it comes to crafting narcotics and other materials, especially in the early game. I might have put it up higher on the list, but it plays this annoying music whenever it's turned on. And I don't like that. Next we have the Death Recovery mod. This mod will allow you to build a tombstone that you can place in your base, on your raft, outside of a dungeon, or wherever else you might want. If you die, you can simply go up to the tombstone and collect all of your gear, preventing you from rage quitting. I'll admit this is a pretty OP mod, so much so I placed it low on this list. I do like having consequences in a video game, but sometimes the consequences in ARK can be overwhelmingly awful. So if you want a more forgiving ARK experience, this is a must have mod. At number 13 we have the Backpack mod. As you may have guessed, this mod will allow you to carry more stuff in your inventory. There are three different backpack sizes, all of which you unlock at different levels. The small backpack is unlocked at level 30, medium is unlocked at level 45, and the large backpack can be unlocked at level 60. Once you have a backpack crafted, you simply equip it to your offhand slot and then you can carry more stuff. Next is the Better Beacons 2.0 mod. Having this mod active will allow you to retrieve better items from beacons, which is kind of obvious I suppose. You can even end up getting Ascendant and Mastercraft gear from red and yellow beacons, so It'll give you an extra incentive to go beacon hunting even if you're already at a high level. Coming in at number 11 is the Dino Patrol System mod. I absolutely love this mod. It'll allow you to set waypoints for your land or air dinos so they'll patrol a perimeter that you set for them. There's a lot to go over with this mod, but essentially it's a great way for keeping hostile dinos and players away from your base and any other location you want to have patrolled. I've been using this mod for a while now and I don't feel at home until I at least have a pack of raptors patrolling the outside perimeter of my base. The Dino Patrol System mod adds a whole new level of strategic planning in your ARC game and I just highly recommend it. Next is the Dynamic Fence System mod. This one allows you to build a really cool looking fence that's straight out of Jurassic Park. You can use the fence to either stun enemies that run into it, or damage enemies that run into it. You can do all sorts of cool things with the Dynamic Fence System mod, like building a wyvern taming enclosure, or just a simple taming pen. I primarily use it as a perimeter wall around my base, and as you might have guessed, I like to use the Dino Patrol System mod to set up a route for dinos to run around the outside perimeter of the fence, keeping enemies even more at bay. Number 9 is the Appetizer mod. With this mod you can build different types of appetizers that will allow you to tame wild dinos more quickly. If you force feed a tranked dino a blue appetizer, their food level will go down more quickly over time. If you force feed it a red appetizer, it will take a chunk of its remaining food away. And for passive tame dinos, which you can't force feed, you have the Appetizer Grenade. All the appetizers require a lot of berries to craft, so this mod will give you an incentive to create an awesome farm. Next on the list is the Balanced Narcotics mod. With this mod you can craft a narcotics table which you can then use to craft better narcotics, trank spear bolts, and trank darts. 
The amount of resources it takes to build upper end narcotics, trank darts, and spear bolts makes it feel like you've earned the right to use them and doesn't feel like you're cheating. This is another mod that requires you to have a large farm since you'll need a lot of berries to craft the advanced narcotics. It's nice being able to feel super confident when you go out on a taming mission, so when you finally get to the point where you can craft 30cc darts, you know you'll have a great chance of taming whatever you want. Number 7 is the Utilities Plus mod. This mod allows you to build items that can be reused, like spears, grappling hooks, bolas, and parachutes. So, instead of a bola being consumed after it's thrown, you instead have a health bar for the bola that slowly runs out the more you use it. So, it doesn't give you an infinite amount of bolas for the price of one, but it does give you a lot more than just one bola. This is especially nice early in the game when you have to rely on spears and bolas to get by. Later on, it prevents the hassle of having to craft a ton of grappling hooks or parachutes. Coming in at number 6 is the Dino Tracker mod. You can craft the Dino Tracker pretty early in the game and you can equip it by putting it on your gloves or your gauntlets. You equip it the same way you would equip a skin. When you activate the Dino Tracker, you can use it to find your tamed dinos, other players, and you can even use it to see what wild dinos are close by, making taming missions more fruitful. This mod has saved me massive amounts of time trying to find dinos I lost, or finding the perfect dino to tame. Next is the Versatile Raft mod. I would hate to play Ark without this mod. It allows you to build different types of rafts, from small and fast to large and slow. The Battleship Raft, which is my personal favorite, is 50% faster than a normal raft, and it can support up to 400 structures. You can do a lot with 400 structures on a raft, but if that's not enough, you can build the mobile base raft, which allows for 600 structures, but it's a lot slower. Those are just a couple of examples of the rafts you can build with the Versatile Raft mod. There are a lot of raft mods out there, but I just think this one's the best. Number 4 is the Upgrade Station mod. This mod could have its own video because there's a lot to it, but I'll summarize it the best I can right now. There are three parts to the Upgrade Station. There's the Augment Station, which allows you to build augments that you can use to upgrade your gear. There's the Blueprint Station, which allows you to turn any item into a blueprint so you can mass produce that piece of gear. And then there's the actual upgrade station where you can turn a primitive item into an ascendant item, granted you have enough materials to do so. This mod might seem OP, but it takes a lot of resources to upgrade items, so the cost is fair, but high. Just a quick tip with this mod, if you use it to create an ascendant pickaxe for example, you can then turn that pickaxe into a blueprint. Then, use that blueprint and a high crafting skill on your character to create an even higher level Ascendant Pickaxe. We could really go into the weeds with this mod, so I'll just leave it there. Next is the Classic Flyers mod. Remember when Wildcard Studios nerfed the hell out of Flyers and then a mod named Urtosi or Urtosi saved the day? Essentially, all the flyers in Ark were perfect, and then Wildcard Studios caved into the pressure from PvP players who were saying that, you know, it wasn't fair that people could fly all the way across the map. So, the developers nerfed the flyer's stamina down to almost nothing. You'd have to constantly land if you wanted to fly anywhere. Anyway, Classic Flyers gave us back all that stamina, and it has a well-earned spot at number 3 on this list. Coming in at number 2 is the Automated Resource Pump mod. This one might be a little controversial, and it might not be for everybody. This mod allows you to create pumps that slowly collect materials from the ground, like metal, obsidian, crystal, and oil. At level 35, you can unlock the Resource Pump table, which you'll use to craft whatever type of pump you want. You don't have to place the pumps anywhere special, it's just anywhere on the land is fine, so they're super convenient. You won't be able to build these pumps early game, but mid to late game you'll be able to, and it saves a shitload of grinding time. If I were to set up a serious server with a lot of players, I probably wouldn't use this mod, but if it were a solo game or just a server with a couple of friends, I would. Nobody likes having to grind for materials, so for the right price, you can circumvent the hassle by building automated resource pumps to do the grinding for you, 
while you're off doing all the fun stuff. This is especially nice for people who work and don't have a ton of time to play video games throughout the week. So, coming in at number one, I bet nobody could have guessed this, <laughs> Structures Plus. The S Plus mod is the most revered mod for ARK to date. Huge shout out to the modder who created it, Orion Sun. You know, I don't even know where to begin with this mod, so to boil it down, S Plus is a mod that makes ARK play the way it should. So much so that the developers at Wildcard Studio actually implemented a bunch of stuff from S Plus into the actual game. Not everything from the mod has transferred over to the source code, but a lot of it did, making ARC players on PC, and especially consoles, very happy. I'm not going to even start trying to list everything that makes Structures Plus great. Just get it. The only reason to not have S Plus, in my opinion, is if you want to play ARC in its purest form, which is respectable, but most people will enjoy the benefits that S Plus has to offer. So there you have it, Havoc's top 15 favorite ARC mods for an improved gaming experience. There are so many great mods for ARC that a list like this is very hard to do. It would almost be a full-time job just testing every ARC mod that's ever come out. So if your list looks any different than mine, or you know, if I missed any great mods, please let us all know in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, please consider dropping a thumbs up on it. If you want more content like this to come out of the Havoc Gaming channel, subscription would be extremely helpful. I'm all about you guys, so if you have any recommendations for other videos you'd like to see, throw those in the comments section. I'll take your suggestions into consideration. Thanks for watching, enjoy the mods, Godspeed.